pop up? Yeah! All right, we're going to spend a little time showing you how we make our puzzles here, right, Rip? Okay, so the puzzle we'll start with is this cardboard teeter-totter puzzle. We will also do this plastic whack-a-mole puzzle. I did record a lot of footage of how to make the really advanced puzzles out of industrial plastic. If there's interest in building the most advanced puzzles, which require uh, these plastic sheets I'm showing here to be ordered, and uh, building a plastic bender like this one, then let me know in the comments and subscribe, and we'll, uh, we'll add that as well. The puzzle we're going to start with is a cardboard teeter-totter. I generally start with cardboard so I can make sure that Ripley likes it, it's free, it's easy to cut, it won't last very long, but that's okay. We'll reinforce it a little bit and Ripley likes it anyway. And this box is a little taller than we need, they tend to get a little too flimsy at that uh, height, so I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, so uh, as you can see I've started cutting along the halfway point. And we'll just keep doing that. Most of the cuts and everything else with cardboard don't need to be very precise. You can make mistakes and redo it. We'll actually fit one of the sides of this box that we're cutting apart on top of the other. So that'll double the thickness along the outsides of it and it'll make it quite a bit stronger. Okay, so now we have two boxes. We're gonna squeeze inside each other. Go ahead and start taping these up first. That makes some of the cuts easier, it won't fall apart on us. I guess I mentioned in the intro, we'll use a lot of packing tape. Tape, sort of a duct tape of uh, puzzle building, I guess. This guy should fit over the top. Like that. It looks like it does. Do we have enough tape here? Seems a little flimsy still. Let's add some. Okay, now we have the box and the dimensions that I think will work pretty well. The next thing I'm going to do is keep taping all of these unbound ridges. I think that's pretty good. Put it up. Now, that's a pretty solid box there. Okay, so let's put a hole in it. What side do we want to use? I don't think it matters. I think we reinforced both of these sides. If you started with a box that was already the right size, and you can't get inside the part that you want to pack, uh, use as the top, no big deal. You can always fold in a little packing tape underneath or not even worry about it. So let's make a circle. You can use a template to make a circle. We're just going to use our trusty packing tape again. That's okay. That's one. That's something we can uh, fix with <laughs> more packing tape. 
Now there's a couple of flaps under here, so you'd have to cut pretty deep and you might have to go back in and get a little extra after you make your first cut, but that's basically the idea. See, we made that mistake there. The reason that I'm reinforcing all this stuff with the tape is it just adds a little life to it. This puzzle will not last very long. That's what we get for free. So I'm going to add a bunch of tape around the part of the puzzle where the dog's nose and mouth are. This will help stop it from getting all slobbery and decomposing so quickly. It also makes it a little smoother and discourages the dog from biting the puzzle in general. And that brings up a good point. This puzzle and other puzzles, including most store-bought ones, are intended to be used together with your pet, not to have the pet left alone. They're interactive, they require training and practice. Sometimes you have to direct the dog by saying no biting or good, you know, offering praise and that kind of thing. There's definitely a lot of that in Ripley's videos. For example, right Ripley? So next we need to think about how to teeter-totter this. If we're going to make this into a whack-a-mole type of a game, then all we need to do is make smaller circle cuts all around it and then dog can put his or her paw in it and advance the ball to the middle where the ball can come out and win the game. Yeah, I didn't really realize that the teeter-totter and whack-a-mole puzzles are pretty much the same. The only difference is the number of holes that you put in the box and whether or not you add a a cylinder on the bottom for the puzzle to balance on. So let's talk about that. You can use pretty much anything that you can find around the house to do this with. I ended up trying quite a few different items. I used a uh, paper towel dowel. Uh, that worked fine as far as the puzzle balancing on, but I found that even Ripley, a small dog, could squish it when she put her weight on the puzzle, which they will do in order to tip it from side to side. So instead, I looked around for something a little stronger. There are things like wrapping paper dowels. You could even use wood dowels. I found a PVC dowel that I had left over from something. That would work great. Uh, what I finally settled on for this video was a paint roller cylinder. I'll use it for this puzzle. It's pretty sturdy, so it can't. It's got plastic inside. It, uh, Ripley's not going to be able to squish it, and then when we're done with the puzzle, I'll just put it back on the shelf. And there we go. That's it. We've got a teeter-totter puzzle. Let's see if Ripley likes it. There we go. You got it? Well, that was easy. Good girl, Ripple. Good girl. You want to put it in? Put it in. Good girl. Where's your ball? Yay, Ripple. Can I get a high five? Yay, you good girl. Okay, so for the intermediate level, what we'll start with is a craft box. You can get these at just about anywhere for, they start at about maybe $7. I think this one might have cost more like $10 or $10, $12, something like that. Of course, the big ones you pay $50 for. But the basic idea is same box as we made before, same dimensions. It's just going to be more sturdy. You know, this kind of box could actually last you a year or two. The general idea here is that we will build the exact same toy that we built out of cardboard. In this version, we'll go ahead and make a whack-a-mole puzzle. It's a lot sturdier, so if you wanted to, wanted to use a craft box, you know, more like this one, of course, it's going to be a little more expensive, but, you know, the same idea holds, and, you know, this might work better for a 50-pound Labrador than, than the other size, so. I'm not actually going to destroy this one. I'll show you a bit about how I built the one that I have done already. This one, as you can see, I wasn't kidding about the Ripley destructive capabilities here. This has been used over time, lots of little mistakes, but you know, in general, I added some, um, some rubber footies that helps keep the puzzle in place because otherwise it does slip around a lot on wood floors or carpet. So what you're going to want is to decide what it is you'll use to cut the holes. 
The fastest way is to use one of these hole saws I've got here. Pretty much any kind of cordless drill or screwdriver will work. They make these in all different sizes. They run from about $10 to $20. I use a Lennox brand. They're really sharp. They're made for cutting through steel pipes, I think, so they go through the plastic very easily. But if you don't have these or don't want to use a saw, ideally, probably the best non-drill version of this would be a set of tin snips. Just mark out your circles here and, and, and do the cutting that way. Maybe we can make this, uh, show you a little example here, get rid of some of this ripply damage. I mean, it's even possible to do this with a strong pair of scissors, like gardening shears or I have a pair that we use in the kitchen that are nice and sturdy. Of course, the larger you make the exit hole, the easier the puzzle is to solve for the dog. So uh, you could start small and enlarge it if you think it's causing too much frustration. So let's make sure that Ripley is interested, huh? And this is the expression I get from Ripley when I give her a puzzle that she's already solved or she thinks is too easy. Sorry Ripley, go ahead and solve it one more time and we'll give you a harder one next week. <laughs> Good girl, can I get a high five? Thanks for watching everybody. Here's a little bonus clip that shows how easy it is to get Ripley to take a pill when she's sick. Thank you, Ripley. Next week we'll be back to our regular scheduled puzzle solving. Let us know in the feedback and comments whether or not this type of how-to video was interesting. And if you liked the video, then please do hit that like button and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. So we appreciate everybody. Happy High Five Friday.